Hello, and welcome back to the Bot Spot. Today, we will continue our series on useful Christianity with brotherly love. We've discussed how one should live to be useful as a Christian, so today we will focus on how to apply that to your brethren. We know this as brotherly kindness, or, as it's literally defined by Strong's interlinear concordance, the love of brothers, brotherly love, or the love of Christian brethren. The word in Greek is Philadelphia. So due to this, going forward, I will refer to this concept as brotherly love. Jesus, shortly after washing his disciples' feet and warning of his betrayer, says, as found in John 13, 34 through 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. He knew that he would be with his apostles for just a little while longer, and they would need to love each other, to rely on each other, especially considering the hardships they would face after Jesus' death. Now this is not just a command given to the apostles. Paul in Romans 12 tells of how we are to serve God so we can be holy and acceptable to God. In verses 9-11 through 11, he continues, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lacking in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Brotherly love should be one of sincerity. There should never be said, I did X, so I love you more than Y, in the congregation or out of it. The reason I, and hopefully all, godly preachers preach is for the benefit of the congregation. However, that doesn't make me better than anyone else attending, nor does it make me extra well-pleasing to the Lord. We either are, or we aren't. And the goal of a preacher is to make all those listening live lives well-pleasing to the Lord. There are a lot of benefits provided to those who practice brotherly love. Here are just a few. It allows us to encourage each other both towards growth as well as toward continual worship of God. Hebrews 10, 24-25 And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is a matter of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Next, it gives us the opportunity to save ourselves from stumbling. 1 John 2, verses 9-11 through 11. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Furthermore, by a brotherly love, we have a unique chance to accomplish what's found in James 5, 19-20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. It's important to pay attention to your own spiritual growth and effort in living a godly life. However, it's also important to consider the growth and godliness of those in the brethren. While that is one of the expectations of elders, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, we should not shirk our responsibility to do good, especially to those of the household of faith, Galatians 6 and verse 10. We all need encouragement and love from time to time. Let us never forget this in our endeavor for the faith. Else, we may not be so freely loving ourselves. Our next series of messages will complete this series of love, and we will be looking at love a bit differently than we have the others. Thank you for your attention.